My name is David Vos. I'm an organic farmer here in Litchfield Park, Arizona. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about these two spreaders over here, built by Down Easter. They are drop spreaders, so they operate by dropping the product out of the hopper directly on the bed. This is a single bed spreader. We've been working, demoing this for two years now and found it to be incredibly accurate and reliable. We use a 6000 series John Deere, you know, 100, 120 horsepower range. This hopper can hold up to two tons of material. For us, we blend, we do our own compost and then we blend into that compost a number of amendments. So we have a product here that is a blend of very dusty things and very dense things. And that's the beauty of the spreader in that you can take all of these different materials, blend them together, put them in the hopper, and spread them very uniformly on the top of your planting surface, your bed, not in the furrow if you don't want to, and you can put down materials that are very different and get them exactly where you want them versus if you were spreading with a spin spreader, you would find that the dustier, lighter materials would end up closer to the actual area you're spreading the band width of the spread, whereas the heavier, denser materials like the pelleted materials would end up throwing much further so you would not get the uniformity that you get with this spreader. One of the features of this spreader is its ability to change its band width of spread. So if you wanted to uh, close this down so that you had a narrower spread, you would turn these handles. There it's going out, okay? I still have product in it, so it's, it's much easier to do when you do not have product in the hopper. You're not pushing against the weight of that product. So then to go the other way, it'll move the baffle in. And that will go all the way into 12 inches. So on the three bed spreader, we're using a 8245 John Deere, so 245 horsepower tractor. It has a much greater lift capacity, obviously, than the six series. This set of wheels on the rear are designed to take the weight off of the tractor so that you could fill these potentially, let's say, with depending on the material you use, how heavy it is, uh, you could put up to two tons in each one. And therefore, that might be a lot of weight to be driving down the road with even this tractor. Uh, so these crazy wheels displace that weight and make it much safer to transport the material to the field and to operate in the field. I plant in a pattern and just keep moving the whole time. But you could stop, back up, go back into bed. Other features about this spreader is the stainless steel chain. So it's a very strong chain. You can change the RPM. Uh, we change from within the tractor, changing the RPM flow to the units. Therefore, this one is set up at running today at 12 RPMs, but it could run very slowly if you wanted to put less material down. And the rate of application is set by the combination of the RPM of the chain and the speed of the tractor. We're trying to put down, depending on what we're planting, a range of two to seven tons of material per acre. But you could put more or less. I believe you could probably dial this down to put 500 pounds of a material per acre. So there are some screens at the top of the hoppers in these to catch any materials you don't want in. For example, a rock, some large chunks of compost manure that didn't quite break down. There's some plastic 
and a little piece of chain. And those screens come out easily. You can see they're four by four steel and they have a hinge. They clip in, drop back down and uh, stay in place to catch anything that you don't want being spread in your field. It has a very heavy duty steel frame so there'd be no chemical interaction with whatever you spread. In the demonstrations that we did today, I was planting at four miles an hour. And that's a comfortable speed. I had 12 RPMs, four miles an hour. I believe the unit could probably operate safely at greater speeds, especially length of run was 1200 feet or longer. There's no reason why you couldn't run at six or seven miles an hour. I did not, when I ran these beds, change speed. I ran four miles an hour and just clicked off the hydraulics, came around, came right back in, and followed through on my pattern, maintaining the four miles an hour. People say, oh, good uniformity, and I think it's not uncommon that someone with a competitive spreader, like a spin spreader, which has big discs on the back, so the product falls onto the discs, which are spinning, and it shoots it out, right? So it does a wider band, typically, than my three, maybe a little bit wider, maybe another 10 feet um, with compost, maybe, maybe. But it's, it's, a lot of it's gonna end up in the furrow, the bottom of the furrow, because it's flying and I don't want to waste it in the bottom of the furrow. I'm trying to show you can put this on the bed itself. You can see this field was just furrowed out and I'm on 64 inch center to center of tire, really putting it incredibly uniform on this bed. It's not like part here, there. It's uniformity is the name of the game for this particular um, spread and we grow a lot of spring mix and so we want uniformity because you, you literally have millions of plants per acre and they are very densely planted and populated so you you need that access to the nutrient to be uniform and be similar. We'll plant the entire surface of this bed with 20 lines of spring mix or spinach or arugula or something like that and that's you know, it's gonna have equal access to this nutrient blend that we've put down. I'm a grower, I'm a hands-on farmer. This model is way better, and uh, I'm not the salesperson for this, so much as I am a believer in it and believe it's a really good product and that small farms, the single bed spreader is perfectly adequate can run at a fairly good clip and spread what you need to. Larger farms, the triple with varying bed widths of spread is probably the right thing to use.